Hello, welcome. Uh, as always, we're uh, kicking off a little early just to um, make sure if people come slightly before half past eight, we are here talking, doing something. So, as you know, I'm Rob, this is Ben. We'll do proper introductions later. I'm his dad, he's proper my son. We are going to do, I think so, proper. Better than this? Probably. Who knows? Good stuff. So, Ben, so what we've got to do the TV review while we wait. We do the TV review. So, Ooh, well, we've only seen one thing this week. It's been a busy week. Oh, no. What was, this, what was the second thing? Did we do run? Was that, I didn't no, we did, run. We did, no, we did, did, we one, did? We did one more episode since last week. It was because we did. Because I, I. You've now decided that you've had well, enough. Well, I think it should be called stationary. <laughs> Backwards. Well, it doesn't go anywhere. It, it doesn't doesn't go anywhere. I mean, I I thought the last one was I've I've, I've now I'm not going to watch anymore. So Ben might have to give you the update himself. Because frankly, it was rubbish. It was rubbish. <laughs> and then we saw so not nothing. He, he can give you the update and run next week because I've lost interest. <laughs> we then did uh, Kill Eve. We did, which should also be called stationary. Because <laughs> it's uh, what was that? I read a really good. It was it was a lot of. Filler, not enough killer. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's just not going. What did anywhere. we do this week? It went. They, well, we, we, you may not have seen it yet, but she, she, Villeneuve went somewhere and did not that much else. Anyway, go watch it. We Ben and I weren't impressed either. I will continue with Killing Eve because I think the acting's good. I think the, uh, and I think the, it could the, the be better. Right, you know, the next, never know. I'll, I'll, I'll keep waiting. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep waiting. Fingers crossed. Okay. What else have you got? Well, books, books. Ah, no, see, books, books, ooh. books. Oh, yeah. Um, away. I, uh, I I did read a book this week, but it was it wasn't very good, so I decided not to uh, take that away from the microphone. Don't upset people. Uh, so I uh, decided I'm not gonna I'm not gonna review that one for you because well, I did review it. It's pretty lousy, so I'm gonna tell you. But I, but I am excited, Ben. Dad. By you know hidden it. I'm now excited because I have my uh, my book, The Rewards of Patience, and this is a book all about penfolds, which I'm gonna tell you a bit, bit about later on. And it's all about the history, the family, all the wines, the story behind them. And because uh, I'm, I'm talking to the Penfolds guy about uh, what we're going to do. And he said he would send me a book and he sent me this book. So my reading, uh, my reading this week is uh, this lovely book, uh, which I really enjoy because obviously being a wine geek, I do like reading about wine. So that's that's for me to read. And will you uh, finish that in a week? Yeah. Bloody hell, well, I'll, I'll, it's work. That's research. Work, work, work. Research, that's yeah. work. Like, like all this drinking is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I need to take it off. So I think we're going to start. Are we? Is it half past eight? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, go on then. Oh, what, what well, yeah, I, thought you were gonna, I thought you had a biscuit, but that's all right. Oh, yeah. you're sorry. You're right. No, I did forget about that. So I, I did learn something else new today. So here's your question. Here's your, here's your thing. This is a digestive biscuit. It has chocolate on one side. It obviously is a normal biscuit on the side. Which is the bottom? Which is the top? We learned this tonight, didn't we? So which is the bottom? Which is the top? Now I thought one way. You, you, you tell me. You, you can go top or bottom into into the comments for me if you can. Top or bottom, uh, and then we'll tell you what the the answer is straight from Mrs. McVitty herself. So you can tell us which is. Not I'm sure. That that I'm not sure. I'm going to say. I'm pretty sure they're. Um, are they McVitty? Their own. Their basics brand. Like shh, shh, shh. These are McVitty. Yes, the yes, real yes, ones. yes, yeah, yeah. So not the right. cheap. Not the cheap ones we were. Uh, so tell me, top or bottom? Chocolate is chocolate. Is the chocolate? Sorry, let me get this question clear. Is the chocolate the top or the bottom of the biscuit? You you tell me. Okay. So while we do that, then while they answer that really really intriguing question, uh, I'll say hello. So welcome. Uh, how many have we got, Ben? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Wow. So welcome to Birmingham. <laughs> welcome to Birmingham One School. I'm Rob. Uh, this is Ben. Uh, ben is my uh, apprentice. And Ben, I have exciting news for you this week. Go on then. I, oh, uh, I didn't notice. Yeah. You didn't notice. Go on to, to show the people, good people. Now, what is that, Ben? It's a medium glass. A <laughs> medium glass. Do you know why you got a medium glass? Because I've been a good boy. You I broke all the other ones. <laughs> I couldn't find the small yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've put them somewhere. I, I, I think they are. I know. I, I think I was using them in a tasting yesterday, and I, they're probably in the dishwasher. So, of course, you deserve it. Thanks. Yeah. But next week I'll be back on the. Uh... Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so, uh, so, so welcome. Uh, tonight is all about uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, we've got two lovely Sauvignon Blancs. Uh, but I guess I should start Ben by saying Houston, we have a problem. We do. Well, because... just um. 
Well, just show them what wines we're having tonight. <laughs> so we're having this one. Yes, yeah, a lovely. Um... Oh, what happened? Yeah. Lovely shape. <laughs> lovely shape of that bottle, yeah, it's isn't it? Clever. It's clever. And, and an even it. even better one we have. Yeah. I don't even know the brand of that one. This one. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're very careful. Oh, I know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's the brand. Okay. There you can see. So there, there's the. So as you can imagine, I was, as I was getting the wines out the cellar, sorry, I do have a cellar, but I'm, again, wine geek. As I was getting the wines out the cellar. Uh, I was walking, only walking, I wasn't trying to run. I was going up the stairs, bottle in both hands, and I fell. Uh, I, at my age, you'd fall in order to having a fall. You had a fall, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we call one so, on one and yeah, so, get them to So I was walking the stairs, I, I, I fell down, both bottles went absolutely crash. Crash, the wine went everywhere, all running down the stairs, and I have injuries. Yeah. Spillage is leakage, though. So, uh, yeah, so I have, it wasn't I have injuries. wasted, was it? Well, uh, the, 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 the dog and cat were excited, but not really. Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so, so unfortunately. Um, those lovely wines are, 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 uh, you guys have bought, and uh, I can't taste with you because they, they, actually, I could have salvaged some, but they, they got they blended, mixed, yeah, they blended maybe together. Maybe it would be quite nice. But fortunately, I do have other wines. I do have a, uh, a Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc to try for Ben, and I do have a, a French uh, a French Sauvignon Blanc. So I am gonna, we have got those to taste. They should be pretty similar, but apologies. Uh, that was a bit remiss of me. In the 12 years of running the wine school, I've not actually... Um, Dropped a bottle before, so uh, saying something, isn't it? It is saying something, <laughs> just old age, isn't it? Just old age, never mind. And uh, of course, I have hopefully some of my wine school chums. I've got you Jeff, do? I've got uh, Rupert, I've got uh, Dominic, uh, Katie, and Helen. So, welcome, guys. And these guys, as always, are going to help me. Thank you very much. They're going to help me answer uh, questions and comments you make in um, the uh, Facebook session. So, um, you can uh, Ask questions. Uh, we'll either get to them or um, or those guys will answer them for you. Um, so please, uh, please ask any questions. Uh, those guys will will cover them off for you. So, two Sauvignon Blanc. Have people gone top or bottom? Oh, or they lost the interest? Well, it's tricky, isn't it? There's, it's very half and half. Is I it? think most people are saying chocolate top, which is what we found out was wrong, didn't we? Apparently, the chocolate's at the bottom. So I said chocolate top. Chocolate's coarse at the top, isn't it? I mean, what, 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 who, who, who could say that the chocolate isn't at the top? I mean, it's clearly on top, but there is logic to being on the bottom, and this is what my logic daughter... that we've made up. Well, no, I thought mum. I thought Miss was... Miss Vitty asked mum. Yeah. Mom, mum, Miss Vitty. <laughs> yeah. I thought mum said it was on the bottom, chocolate on the bottom, because if you put it in your mouth that way around the proper way, then you get the chocolate on your tongue, which is good. That's good, isn't it's it? Clever, I, isn't I've it? never eaten. In 60 years, I've never eaten a biscuit that way around before. But really? It, it did make... No, no, not with chocolate, because I always, put, I always put it the right way up. So there you go. There you, you learn something new every day. Anyway, we're not concerned about that. Uh, so we've got two Seven Blancs. Uh, I do have some cheese. I have bought some lovely cheese tonight. I have some uh, goat's cheese. I have some um, some soft blue cheese, and I have some brie. So I'm, I'm sort of a spoiling Ben tonight with the different cheeses he can try with these uh, two Seven Blancs. Sounds good. Um... So, uh, two different styles really tonight. Uh, we've got the French style, uh, which should be a little more crisper, a little more grassy in nature, uh, perhaps a more acidity. And uh, Kiwi or Marlborough, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, should be more pungent, more zesty, more passion fruit. So we're going to try those two in a moment. You've probably already tried, started, haven't you? I, I know what you like. Finished. They've been finished them, haven't they? <laughs> so, but we'll, we'll talk We'll talk about those in a second. We'll get those goes in a minute. But Ben, I want you to tell me everything you know about Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, yeah, quite a lot, actually. Um, I wrote a book about it. Yeah, I know quite a lot. Well, why don't you tell me first so I can test you? <laughs> why don't you ask people if they what they know? So I ask people what Jeff, they... what do you know, mate? Not Jeff, not Jeff. Not just Jeff, you. everyone. Everyone, tell tell Ben what 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 uh, he should know about. Well, it's one. white. It's well, that's the start. Yeah. yeah. It's usually in a bottle unless you've dropped it. <laughs> not always. Um... Indeed. So while they're telling that, here's a question for you. Oh no, I'm, I'm going to ask people too many things. So you can. Uh, well, here's a question for you. So Ben, um, I want to ask you another. Who wants to be a millionaire? Question. Go on then. I don't know what it's worth, but this Even is this me. is. I think this is this is. Um, this is a million pound question. Well, no, half a million because we did we did get a guy go up to half a million. Do you, can you remember his name? I can't. No, but a guy this week apparently went up to half a million, didn't he? Well, he he got the million pound question. But he got it wrong. Well, he didn't get it wrong. He, he chose he, right. he chose yeah, not yeah. to answer it. So half a million pound question. 
in 2010. Yep. Well, I mean, sorry, take a step back. They don't do that in. <clears throat> no. Well, I'm doing. I'm doing, I'm doing. France yep. sells, sorry, sells, produces the most Sauvignon Blanc in the world. Okay. Because France produces the most. Yep. Okay. Yep. In 2010. Yep. This time to be the, the, the year the book was written. So in 2010, <laughs> in 2010, which country produced the second most Sauvignon Blanc? Okay. Yep. So 2010. Yep. Uh, I think the figures, are, I think I know the figures have changed since, but 2010, which country produced the second most? Choice of four, of course. This would be a million pound question, but carry on. Choice of four. Um, a. Madolva. Yeah. B. New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, C. Chile. Yeah. Uh, D. South Africa. So Madolva, New Zealand, Chile, South Africa. I haven't written the answer. You're okay. It's not the answer's not written anywhere. I'm just seeing if what, what what wines we've got you've got there. Uh, well, these are so we, we, we've got a New Zealand. You're not even waiting for help. I want people Don't need to help it. you. I, I'm a natural. Explain why Mondolvi. Have you even heard of that country? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> On Eurovision. Do they? They're winning? No. Or they just nah, take part? they wouldn't win. Yeah, they take part, yeah. Okay. What what language do they speak? Mondovanese? <laughs> There'll be someone who knows. Somebody will tell you. Go on, Jeff. <laughs> no, I don't know. It, but is it that? I want to know. I'm not telling you. So you don't know the answer, so you're now asking everyone. It's ask the audience. Ask the audience. Can I not ask the host? Ah, so they're all saying New Zealand, Chile, mm. New Zealand. Some people are clever. Australia. Is that even one of them? Dominic has gone for South Africa. Where's Dominic gone now? Ah, yeah, that's it. Mm. Is he wrong? Well, I'm, I'm going to, while people answer that question, um, just a little bit about France. So France uh, produces uh, the most. Three main areas for Sauvignon Blanc in, in France. One is the Loire Valley, uh, so we're going to taste one of those tonight. And uh, two of the most famous regions in the Loire are Sancerre and Puy Fumé. And you again, people get confused between Puy Fumé and Puy Fouze. They're similar, aren't they? But Puy Fumé is the village which overlooks Sancerre. Uh, and it makes Sauvignon Blanc. Pouffouze is in Burgundy, and it makes Chardonnay. So that's that's pretty far north in, in France, and therefore it is a very crispy, very very uh, sort of grassy and uh, acidic. So we're going to try that soon. We'll get that. Uh, you then can come down to Bordeaux. Uh, so Bordeaux is a bit further south, more moderate climate, and Sauvignon Blanc is produced there. Sometimes blended with Semillon. And normally sold as a chateau-based wine, so you can get that bit more body in there. Uh, do people like body in their wine? They do like a bit of body. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Not too it? much, yeah. Do you not have to call the police? Sometimes. Yeah, okay. And then uh, you also get Sauvignon Blanc in the south of France. Uh, but while uh, while a Sauvignon Blanc in Loire and Sauvignon Blanc in Bordeaux is generally sold as an AC wine, Appalachian Control, so generally seen as the better wines, down on the south of France, uh, which is Languedoc Roussillon. Uh, it's sold as a paydoc wine. It's sold as the next category down because Sauvignon Blanc isn't a, isn't a traditional grape which is allowed to be planted in the south. So with all the various rules in France, uh, it goes back to tradition. You have to plant grapes that are permitted and Sauvignon Blanc isn't permitted in any AC um, in the south. So it has to be a paydoc. But uh, that's true with the grapes. Cab Sauv and Merlot are the same and you can argue they're excellent grapes. So when you go down to South France, sometimes the better wines are those are actually in what's called the second tier. So you can't always trust ACs, can you, to be the best. So what have we got then? Lots of people saying South Africa. It's okay. between South Africa and New Zealand. So has anyone gone Mondolva? I, no. They, they, think, they think I've just thrown that in. Uh, maybe. Maybe. So Is okay. Right? Well, well you, you're not changing your mind? You're sticking? No, with... I'm sticking. Okay. Well, Ben, congratulations. Oh. You are right. So I get a million pounds? It was half a million, if you remember. Okay, well, I'll take that. Well, you just lot, didn't you realise? But you, you got the million pound question wrong, so you're back What was the million thousand. pound question? I'll take a thousand, that's all right, don't worry. <laughs> hey, that's quite strange. So in 2010, Moldova uh, produced the second most uh, volume of Sauvignon Blanc in the world. I think that's quite quite strange. Uh, since then, um, New Zealand now has increased its uh, plantings a lot. So New Zealand is now, is now second. Uh, but... Uh, uh, but uh, still, still interesting that Mandolva was back in 2010. <laughs> Apparently, produced lots of Sauvignon Blanc. They produce a lot of wine. 
Uh, a reasonable amount, but not 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 as much as you might as you might think. So, um, uh, Ben, you know, last week we discussed which grapes you would marry and which grape you'd have an affair with. Didn't Do you, you need to make an apology? No. no Why? Okay. Just Don't in case so. the grapes saw. Because the grapes watch this, so if they see that you're cheating on them, they'll uh, know the grapes. Good point. They'll that. So, um, so which grape did you want to marry? The Tesco basic one. Yeah, and which? Well, it, it was Chardonnay, let me tell you. That was the one that you wanted. No, 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 no. So don't. You're going to rewrite history. You chose Chardonnay as the grape you want to marry. And which sure. Grape, and which grape do you want to have an affair with? I said that you should always have an affair with the one you want to marry. No, you said Pinot Noir. Come on. Yeah, just, sure I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so what I thought was, it, it, you know, it, what sort of grape is Sauvignon Blanc? Um, and I actually thought it was um, actually one of your girlfriends. Go on then. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> well, I think Sauvignon Blanc actually is, 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 it reminds me of, of several, actually one or several of your girlfriends. Thank you. Yeah. Obvious but delicious. Uh, no, no, what sorry. are you saying that? I don't know. Actually, yeah. <laughs> too much, too much information. Uh, right, so yeah, let's let's crack on. Let's just try the wines. So we're going to do the French one first. So uh, the um, the Domaine uh, de la Bergerie, I think it's called that, but I've lost the label. Um, but Domaine de la Bergerie, uh, let's try it's the French one. Uh, if you haven't got that one, then join us because we're going to try a French <laughs> one as well. Uh, so Ben, get your glass. Uh, let's have a look. So a l lovely pale lemon colour, as as always with most white wines. Um, give it a good old swirl. The the one brilliant thing, actually, I should say, I think, oh, actually, were they? I, I did say, what do you know about um, Sauvignon Blanc, didn't I? And you Pardon? didn't know, yeah, I, I didn't know, you didn't know a lot about Sauvignon Blanc, but but a couple of things, couple of other inter couple of other interesting facts of Sauvignon Blanc. One is this: the parent of um, um, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, sorry, it's, it's the parent of uh, um, yeah, the parent of. What's the parent of, Rob? Did you lose a lot of information when you fell down the stairs? I think I must have banged my Maybe head. Maybe just fall over again and see if it knocks it back in. It's the parent of Cabernet Sauvignon, I'm sorry. It's the parent, along with Cabernet Franc, of Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's a parent grape. There you go. And, of course, it is... Of course. The Ron Seal of Wines. The what? The Ron Seal of Wines. The Ron Seal. Ron Seal. Okay, we're gonna to have to ask people again. What what does Ron seal, seal mean? of wines means? Okay, well they they, they, they is he, can... is that is Ron seal a person? Ron seal of wines. Uh, I mean, let's, let's try it anyway. Let's, let's talk about let's talk about these wines. You've you've got the um, you've got the French one. Uh, let's give a swirl. One of the best things about Sauvignon Blanc is it's it's wonderful aromas. It's very aromatic, and it has wonderful wonderful smells. Mm -hmm. So guys, what can you smell? We're getting melon, toffee. Melon, toffee. Apparently. Okay. Well, well you, you're not taking. You're not. You don't know. <laughs> Daughter says it says it smells of strawberry laces. Okay. Yeah. He does what it says on the tin ah, or on the bottle. Ah. No, no, no. Okay. So. Ah, that's what. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yes. Okay. Right. That's what it means. Yeah, Ron Seal was some. Uh, I'm, you know, I've seen them, the ads where Ron Seal is a bit of DIY stuff, isn't it? It does what it says on the tin. You see, and I think I think Sauvignon Blanc is that it, it, it is obvious. It it, it is it's, it, it's a wine that you can immediately sort of just understand. It. It's very, it's very uh, in a sense. Um, what's the word looking for? Um, not predictable. It, it it has a defined it has defined characteristics about it. It 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 it, it, it is smelly. It's got smelly. A, see, I said that word. You said that. I'm, I'm picking it off here, aren't I? You know, it's got passion fruit. It's got elderflower. It's, it's, it's got uh, vanilla. Okay, no. they, these are large. They're going pear. To pear yeah, peach, elderflower, grapefruit. The the, the French one uh, would have a bit of grass and hay and all that sort of stuff in it. It does, doesn't it? I think that that's a little bit grassy. Mm. Um, yeah, it's got uh, lovely lemon and peach. Grass. Grass. Yeah. Gooseberry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can't be wrong because the great thing about smelling wines is we all smell differently. Um, there shouldn't be too much vanilla because the, these, these will be on oaked um, and vanilla normally is a characteristic you get with uh, with oak, but um, you may well be right. If you can smell it, you can smell it. So. <laughs> Not your only catchphrase. <laughs> Don't change change the, what's the local wine school? Wine tasting for everyone. Change it to, if you can smell it, you can smell it. Yeah, I don't think it'll catch on with it, really. I think it sounds quite good. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, I've got in. 
Oh, you've gone in. Okay, let, let, okay. I'll stop on the stiffy. Let, let's go. Let's do a bit of slurping. That's probably the nicest white wine that we've had. And um, well, for me, if you try, you tried some Sauvignon Blanc earlier in the week because we had a, a Sauvignon Blanc on the WSET course. I was tasting. You liked that one too, actually. Did I have a white wine this week? Yeah, we had some serve. Yeah, we had some Sauvignon Blanc after the. We had six wines. Oh, I definitely from have the, the white one. We did. Hundred percent. I thought I had two reds. Well, it must have been the other son then. Someone had it and said he liked it. it wasn't me. Okay. I don't know then. I thought you did like this one. Well, you should have tried this one because this is this is this is white. It's very nice. So, guys, what do you think? <clears throat> um, oh, and that's not that's nice. That doesn't smell as smelly as the other smelly wine from week one. Okay. Well, the other one might. Okay. Oh, I'm not gonna. So, not gonna... so, so French. I mean, it's it, when you taste it, it's got a. They're very light wine, so because the, there's no tannins, it's not. It's not lingering too long. I mean, they're, they're just. It has wonderful freshness to it. It's very crisp. Um, it's got a, a lovely mouthfeel to it. It's not. It's got not not. You know, it's, it's really well balanced. But the acidity is brilliant. The acidity <clears throat> is what will really go well with just certain foods so just think of think of soft cheeses think of some thai food think of some crab cakes think of some any like it could go with some creamy chicken it could go with all oh, what else cucumber dill salad i mean all oh, all the wonderful foods it could oh, go on and you get the kitchen I was like, <laughs> <laughs> seafood fish yeah, a lot, lot of a lot of different vegetables yes. tomatoes mm. i mean it, it's quite versatile as a wine oh i'm getting quite excited by that wine so that's um <clears throat> that's our french Servant Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I thought I did really like that. I agree, Ben. That was a really delicious okay, one. Nice. Let's try. Let's go to the Kiwi one. Let's go to the New Zealand one. Uh, for, the from Kiwi Mo one. Kiwi. Kiwi. Kiwi one. Uh, let's go to uh, the one uh, from Marlborough. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed Ooh. actually because the uh, the Snapper Rock one was actually um, what well, is a very good Sauvignon Blanc. So I'm a bit disappointed. I've got that one. I, I've gone to a, a sort of a mud house, which is not bad. I do like mud house as well, but. Snapper Rock, Snapper Rock One actually is um, theoretically anyway was better quality, um, so never mind. Uh, so tell me, guys, what the Snapper One is like. I do hope you like it. Um, uh, so anyway, a kiwi seven long. I mean, again, similar colour. That uh, smells very different. Much more pungent, isn't it? Yeah, and it should be. I mean, this this comes from Sauvignon Blanc likes to grow in a cool to moderate climate. Uh, New Zealand Marlborough is a little bit warmer than Loire. So it, normally the style anyway is a bit more pungency, a, a bit more vibrancy, a bit more exotic maybe. It's, it smells a small passion fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely passion fruit. So it's more tropical fruit coming through as well. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Let's taste it. Glint it's like an angel crying on your tongue. Is that a good thing? Is that good? An angel crying on your tongue. I mean that 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 that, that has great flavour to it. But I guess I do I do love French wines. Um, it's not as acidic, is it? It's not as acidic as the. It's, it's still fresh. Mm. But it's not as acidic as the French one, and it doesn't quite have for me have, have the concentration flavour that the, the, the French one has. Um, but I mean it is very nice, and I actually do like uh, more of the certain one. Um, but I, I, I do I do the French one. So so um, keep on tasting, guys. I'd like you to. Um, I'd like to let me know which uh, which of the two you prefer, and um, what um, which one are we going for? That's ah, tricky because I do actually now try to get my really like passion fruit elements of it. Okay, but probably is it great? One. It's first one, it's first one. No, I, th I think they're both, both the ones I've got. Both. <laughs> <laughs> they're both very good. So so let me know. Uh, I'd like to know if you think uh, the two ones you've got are good because uh, I'm, I'm not able to join you in that. So are they good? And I guess let's do... The sound's um, gone weird. Has everyone got bad sound? Ah! Okay. Well, tell you what. See, with that, that might... Let's do it. Because everyone's saying it sounds bad. Okay. I don't know why that is. I, did, I don't think it was plugged in fully. So maybe is it not? I, I think so. We'll leave it like that. Can you hear us now? So, <clears throat> we're just gonna, I'm just going to talk for a minute. So, uh, but this is without the microphone in. So... Uh, the microphone has worked better because I think it picks up uh, when we just have a chat. So when we've got to sort of just project, 
project a little bit yeah. more. It, it won't sound as crisp. This will be my film and TV stuff annoying me now, but no, it'll be fine. I think this might even be louder. It'll just sound a bit more echoey and noisy. Ignore me, carry on. You like wine, I, I do sound. Everyone says it's better now. Okay. Sorry, guys. So, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, hearts for uh, the French. You've been practicing. Yeah. All week. Hearts for the French and thumbs up for the uh, New Zealand one. Yeah, so. For the wines or just the people? Wines. Don't, let's not get to. Uh, Political. Into, <laughs> well, yeah. So, uh, hearts for the French uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, thumbs up for the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I've got forgotten which. Ah, uh, yes. Left and right. So, but we, we know this doesn't work this way. Problem is, if you leave it, you can't see all the comments again. So just check there's no good comments. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Yes, if you have problems. Yeah, yeah lots of people saying. Yeah. Oh, well. Sorry, Did you say anything though. important? Probably not. Yeah. Did you miss anything there? What are you saying? So lots of lots of uh, lots of things. Lots of things. Should we have a look? How many people have said what? Sixty-one. Oh, so like the heart. The what's it? The thumbs up are winning. That's not by the, loads. Um, That's the, the New Zealand one. New Zealand one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but not by lots. Oh no! Okay, it's at the back. <laughs> it's about double of what the other the other one is. So maybe. How is thirty-eight? Over 25, double. Well, it's just about when you take that down to 20 and 40. Okay. <laughs> Close. And by the time you... Uh -huh. See, look, now it's at 40. Soon it'll be. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. It, it is more popular by, by quite a long way. I, 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 I do agree with that. Should we try some cheese then? See what difference that makes? Okay, so um, did you all get some cheese? Have you all got different foods to go with the wines? So Ben, uh, so let's that's... have a look. Um, let's try the uh, goat's cheese first. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Well, that sounded like Captain Taylor. Um, why do you only let red wine breathe, or should you let red white wine breathe too? Uh, you should let white wine breathe too as well, uh, because um, you know I do contend every wine uh, will improve a little bit. Just get it out of the bottle. If you are buying wines. Let's say the very commercially successful Blossom Hill, uh, Yellowtail, they need less breathing and they're designed to be drunk straight away. So you can argue you don't need to let them breathe at all. Um, but even just 10 minutes will make a difference. And these wines, even though they're white, then it would benefit with just getting some air. It just helps lift the aroma and it just helps improve the. I think the, the, the flavour of it. So uh, you, you only need 10 minutes, half an hour. Uh, of course, if you've had the wines in the fridge for a while, if you've taken them straight from the fridge and you drink them, you are drinking them too cold. Just like uh, the chocolate. We, like, we learned this earlier. That's true. We did do that earlier. So try and get your, even your Sauvignon Blanc, which, you know, would be, would be served, at, served at the well chilled end. That's still 6 to 10 degrees Celsius. So still warmer than the fridge. And personally, I'm, I always prefer them, you know, around eight, nine degrees because they are, they just give you more flavour. And the thing I love about wine, of course, is all the different flavours you can get. So get let them breathe a bit, give them a swirl, get the aromas going, get some air into them. And I think you will find a difference. And if you are ever lucky enough, um, actually, Jeff and I did a, a Burgundy tasting last uh, Tuesday night. I mean, a, a marvellous uh, Chablis Premier Cru. And Which didn't break. I didn't break, thank goodness. I, I would have been. Yeah, no. uh, so, so, and it was fantastic, and it you know it really did improve after being exposed to some air for for about an hour or so. Um, so, yeah, let them breathe. I think that's important, and uh, get them get them up to uh, get them out of the fridge so they warm up a tad as well. And I think they they will taste a lot lot better. And of course, if you have them with the right food, they will taste even better. Hmm. Yeah. Is this the right food then? Yeah, these 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 are good food. So if you want to try some ghost cheese, so just try to take a bit of ghost cheese. Ghost cheese, okay. Okay, you're not keen on ghost cheese, am I? Am I not? Who said that? Who said that? Did I? Okay, we're gonna get some. So what what food are you eating, guys? What food are they eating, Ben, with me? Well, Zoe is a hipster. 
she's having some vegan um, something. But what are you having? Vegan. We're having vegan sushi because we're hipsters. So we've got some good. hipsters watching. That's good. That sushi will work ex exceedingly well. That's, that's a really good call, actually. Um, but does I mean that 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 goat's cheese and that the French Sauvignon Blanc is it, just perfect, isn't it? It's creamy, it melts in the mouth, and it just brings out lovely, lovely expression of flavours in the Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. And it's just a great combination. Um, I like goat's cheese. That's gaslighting good. me, isn't it? Oh. I don't know what gaslighting me. Yeah, no, I'm not not excited to try the blue cheese. Uh, okay, I'm not let's, let's go next to the brie. So we've got some brie. I've had these cheeses out for a while. Uh, so exactly, are... should you let cheese breed as well? We again, warm up, you see. Again, if cheese is too cold, same problem. You just don't get flavour. So yeah. you've got to let the cheese warm up. Room temperature, really, for cheese. Mm. Better no, cheese. Feta, feta cheese. Oh, Actually, I yeah, no, feta, feta cheese is mm. brilliant. And I, again, feta cheese is fantastic with Sauvignon Blanc. So if you've got that, well done. I didn't have any. So I would have got some feta cheese. It's good to know feta cheese mm. is more often. Oh wow, that's nice as well. I do, I do like brie though. But that brie, that um, I think is maybe even better than the goat's cheese. I don't know, but it's... Um... I think the goat's cheese sticks to your mouth <coughs> better. Therefore yeah. it works quite well with the wine. Mm. But I still like the brie. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think those combinations, I mean generally soft cheeses uh, with, with vibrant whites, acidic whites, uh, the acidity in the wine just cuts mm. through the fattiness of the softer cheeses. So that's a great contrast you get in wines. And a bit like sweet and sour in that sense, the contrast works well. So acidity with fatty stuff works works really quite well. So that's really quite nice. Would you ever, as Alex has asked this, would you ever decant white wine? Uh, would I ever? Um, I, I, <clears throat> Alex, I probably would only occasionally. I'd probably decant reds more. Uh, but I think if I was... Um, if I had a really stunning white wine, and I probably don't don't buy stunning white wines as often as I should, uh, but saying that, actually for next week's Burgundy, we have, actually have two excellent white Burgundies, which are both reasonably expensive. So I, I might, for the occasion, decant them because, because again, they will benefit. Um, you don't have to decant though. You see, you, you decant you decant wines for two reasons. You decant wines either because they're young and they'll improve with just more exposure to oxygen. Uh, or you decant them because they're old and they've got lots of sediment uh, and therefore you want to just separate sediment from the wine. So that's fine. Now, so most white wines aren't going to be that old, so aren't going to form a sediment for you. Um, but I guess they could, they could still be too young and therefore decanting. But you don't need to decant it. You, you can get them in the glass. If you just get them into a glass like these, that sort of size, don't fill them up. That, that, that's going to help you get a lot of air into it. So, you know, uh, on my burgundy night, that, that that's probably fine for me. But So occasionally I might, but if I'm honest, more often than not, just with reds. And normally, because the red is too young, it, it's just going to help getting lots of air into it. And I do think uh, if you want a, a good tip for... Um, I, I, I've stopped me, Ben, if I've told this story before, but um, if you do want to impress... I think I've told this story you before. You have. Is this the one where... Should I tell it? Got me. Is it where if you, you invite guests round, you... You buy a really nice expensive bottle, but you drink that the night before, and you you leave the bottle on the side, and you give the guest the cheap one, which has been decanted for a while. Yeah. So do you listen? You do, okay. Yeah, so essentially, sometimes just letting a wine breathe, even overnight, can make, can make a big difference. Overnight? Well, just 24 hours. Wow. Uh, and, and therefore, I mean, if, if, it's, if it's a cheap and horrible wine, sometimes if it's very... I mean, when I say cheap, I mean, I mean the, you see the... The Blossom Hills and the Jacobs Creek and those wines are actually very good, so you don't need to leave those. They are, they are. But in the bad old days, when you remember some of the cheaper wines were so tart and bitter that you actually needed to soften them up. They were too tannic. Uh, and I think if you get a sort of an inexpensive French wine, then actually just just letting it breathe for a good while will just take the soften the tannins and, and make it very drinkable. Um, so yeah, I think uh, so. Yes, so so you you can you can white wines are cool. Yeah, and um, someone's asked. You, for two weeks' time, have you got any English wines? Ready? Yes, yes, so I, I have all the English wine information for you. Uh, I was just posting all that information on the website just before I came down here, so I will cover that at the end. I have the English wines there. I've got the two bottles with me. I'll show you those at the end. Uh, I they probably won't them. be the same ones when I you come to... Well, if I, I'll probably drop them again, but I will, I will try not to. Uh, so I'll show you the wines, and I'll tell you where you can buy them from, and all that good stuff. That's coming at the end. Yep, definitely. Very good. So, a uh, bit of blue cheese. I'm not sure about that. 
What makes it blue? Well, it's a bit of a risk because I, I do remember going back to when Ben was about seven, seven. eight, nine, and we went to Italy. And um, was I that old? You that old? I don't think I was you're that younger. Old. You're, yeah, you're yeah. five or something. Oh, yeah. oh no, Hannah, Hannah was two and a half, wasn't she? Yeah. Hannah, Hannah was two and a half, so you'd only be five. You'd be five, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, we went to this uh, lovely Italian restaurant and. Uh, <laughs> We said to Ben, would you like some tiramisu? And Ben's always quite keen on his food. Well, so he is. said, he said uh, I'll try some. Well, I don't know, well, not, not, he probably said his little squeaky voice back then. I'll, I'll have some tiramisu. I'm not sure it's much. Not different. Right? <laughs> and uh, so he tried it. And within a, a, within sort of a few seconds, he decided he was going to bring back his whole dinner. So we were in this quite posh restaurant. So we were, which is a bit foolish given he was five and he had three kids under five. But so we're suddenly trying to find ways of hiding this uh, this sick. Well, you know, it's not true. Not sure how that comes into the blue cheese story. Only because uh, if you used to don't know, eat it and you eat it and you have a violent reaction to it. I violent think, reaction. It just reminds me of that story. Is it, of I can do a happened. violent reaction. You're gonna try some. Try, try. Ugh, some. I don't think I've ever had blue cheese. That does not look like something you should put in your body. You can try a smaller bit just in case. It looks quite. Easy. It looks quite big. Ugh. I'm not sure. Is it is it mould that gives it that colour? No, it's it's just it, it's not mould. Don't worry. <laughs> I just that just doesn't look. That just does not look. It's some lovely hair in it as well. <laughs> I'm gonna try this one, the blue cheese with the um, Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, if Emily's gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Tastes fine, but. Wasn't Emily? <laughs> Try some wine, wash it down. Not that one, this one. Have some biscuit if you do the biscuit. <laughs> well, actually, I did bring your cheese biscuits for you, today. I thought you those. I thought you'd complain if you didn't bring your biscuits. Yeah, it tastes nice, but I still don't. Mm. I do not agree with that. Fundamental level. Uh, what, uh, what what food and wine pairings you've done tonight that work really well? So that would be good to hear. So if you've got anything that worked exceedingly well, that that would be marvellous. Um, that would be good. Um, uh, so, so, I mean... Different styles, really. Uh, so the Marlborough style is very pungent. Uh, the the French style is is grassier and uh, Chris um, uh, sort of yeah, a bit more, a bit more acidic. Generally speaking, with seven block like these, you drink them when they're young. Uh, so if you are buying wines, uh, seven block wines, generally speaking, just buy the youngest vintage you can. They they're not designed to age. They're designed simply to enjoy, enjoy the freshness of them. Um, there are some very good uh, as a wine Puy Fume, which uh, there's a winemaker called Didio Dagano, and his uh, Puy uh, his Puy Fume, <laughs> his Puy Fumes do age really well, and they are stunning. Um, again, we're talking thirty, forty pounds a bottle, so they're not cheap. Um, so drink them young, uh, mainly on oak. So there's no oak in these wines. It's about freshness. It's about vibrancy. If you do see a wine called Fume Blanc, then that actually means it's an oaked Sauvignon Blanc, and they produce that style um, sometime, uh, quite a lot in California. Um, Robert Mondalvi produces a great uh, Fumé Blanc, uh, generally a bit warmer where, in California where they've got it there, and therefore aging in oak for, for a bit just adds a bit more texture to it, a bit more body. And I think they're brilliant, uh, but they are not the style we're drinking tonight. So if you like the New Zealand style, the French style, then these uh, these Fumé Blancs from uh, California are just different. So worth trying. I, I do believe you should always experiment. So try them. Uh, a bit more body, a bit oaky characteristics, and they're very delicious. Uh, you, the, 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 the Bordeaux style uh, from the Bordeaux style, um, some of the the, uh, the crew Class A um, Sauvignon Blanc from Bordeaux, uh, the Chateau based ones can have a bit of oak and, and stuff and be very, very delicious. And they will age a bit longer. If you, if you get a good uh, crew Class A from Bordeaux, they will age um, for up to 10 years. But if not, these, I mean, drink them within two or three years. Don't, don't keep them any longer. They are meant to be fresh, fresh, fresh. Jeff's complaining about your cheese choices. Does you need more acidic cheeses? He, him and I, I think, because we had this conversation on um, on Friday, I think we have, a, we have a couple of different opinions on, on food and wine, oh. which he expressed on, <laughs> on Tuesday. So it's fine. It's, it's about a bit of opinion. I, I quite like fatty cheeses. Um, oh, where's the comment gone? Yes, uh, Emily, Emily didn't like the, the, the mouldy cheese. Did she not? No. Emily? We were going to try it together, you see. Oh, okay, she tried it together, okay. Yeah. Wasn't keen. So I, I think, uh, I mean, acidic cheeses are clearly work, because you're going to match acidities. 
I guess I'm trying to do a contrast, which is acidity cutting through fattiness of the cheese. Um, so, um, Sauvignon Blanc is a grape that needs to grow in a cool climate, cool to moderate climate. It buds later, it ripens early, so it's, it's well, well, uh, well good. So that's really poor. Well good in it. Well good in it. <laughs> uh, it, it, it. It's a very adaptable, very suitable to that sort of cooler climate. But the flavours come through quite late in Sauvignon Blanc. So you, when, when you pick the the, 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 so the discussion in the, in the Sauvignon Blanc world at the moment with wine growers is when do you pick? And some advocate picking early to get more acidity, more more uh, crispness. But you get less flavour. Some are now saying pick later because you get more pungency, more flavour come through, but you do lose the acidity. So it's it's it, it, fairly interesting, I guess, if you're into that. Um, Megan's asking, what is an example of a uh, acidic cheese? <laughs> Ask, Ask Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. Um, uh, Marlborough, uh, where we get most of our sun block from New Zealand. Uh, so they, they, I mean, they are now um, producing much more wine. And three quarters of all New Zealand wine is uh, is produced from uh, Marlborough, or actually produced from New Zealand, which is mainly Marlborough. And eighty six is export. Eighty six percent is exported, so they, they export it. And most of it, we get most of it. So Ben, so Dad, how much wine? So where do we in a league table? Yeah, countries. League table of countries. No, league yeah. table of countries. Yeah. Okay. Um, which countries produce the most? I'll give you the top three. The top three countries are Italy country. one. Okay. Uh, France two, yeah. Spain three. So the top three countries of wine producers in the world are yeah. the three main yeah. older world or European, European countries. And they produce just about, just over 50% of the world's wine. So, it's, wow. so half of the world's wine comes from those top three mm. countries. Where's New Zealand? And you, again, I want you to you, write comments for a minute. Ask, tell Ben, where does New Zealand fit in that world table? Uh, are they fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever? Just, just tell, tell me where you think New Zealand fit in the amount of wine a country twenty two juices. My first my first thought twenty two. Why are you doing that? Um well you can start getting now most wine sold from New Zealand that say Sauvignon Blanc comes from Marlborough, but you can actually split Marlborough down. Uh, there are three sub regions in Marlborough and you can start looking for these. It makes it a bit more it's a little exciting if you want to. Uh, there's a wine region called the large the large wine region in uh, Marlborough is called uh, Wairu and Wairo produces just or just under fifty percent of the wine, and this is this is where you get the fruit intensity, the body. Uh, it's slightly warm and drier, and this is that an example of that would be Villa Maria, so which is a very very good brand, of course. So that's the main one. That's that's Wairo. Uh, and then you've got a couple of others. You've got something uh, a region called uh, Waihopai, and Waihopai is uh, perhaps a little more expressive uh, in in the, in the style. Uh, the Ned comes from that region. Uh, and then the last one is um, our terry. And our terry is a bit cooler, so therefore less pungent, a bit more acidity. Um, Blind River would be an example of that one. So you can start looking at, uh, across and start to see if you like, if you can break it down to those different sub regions. Or you don't have to give a damn and you can just buy a uh, Marlboro Seven Blanc and enjoy it. Are they helping you out, Ben? There's lots of lots of different answers. Um, Jeff and Rupert straight away said 12. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, Kim and then Alex the fifth and then kind of got fifth, seventh, fourth, fifth, eleventh, twenty-first. No one's gone as quite as high as I did. <laughs> so I think on that I'll probably say eleventh. Portugal's eleventh. How far off is it? Oh, not bad. Uh, actually, it's uh, fourteenth. Fourteenth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, ten years ago, and there's only twenty-ninth in the world. So, yeah. Yeah. But. Cool. Uh, uh, 20, 10, 10, sorry, 10 years ago, uh, New Zealand were, were sort of 29th in the world. Oh. And in, that, in the last 10 years, their wine production has increased more popular. Mm. So it's now 14th. Uh, it's not bad. So where will it be in the next 10 years? Where will it be in the next 10 years? That is very true. Um, so yeah, so they are, they are they are sort of getting more time. There's, yeah, I've, got, I've got the list here. Yeah, mm. so. what, I, what I thought was slightly surprising is Russia produces more wine than New Zealand. Where's the UK on there? Oh, no. we're, not, we're, we're, we're not even a rounding error, I think. Yeah. Our is something like 0.00179%, so wow. we're not even a rounding error of wine. Um, so we're, we're pretty, uh, we're very low down. But we China, China is uh, China's ninth. Oh, China's tenth in this list. I thought it was ninth, but China's tenth in this list. Portugal, eleven. Romania, still there. Yeah. Russia, New Zealand, there you go. Uh, we'll do who drinks the most. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you what we'll do we'll, next week. Uh, we're doing Rioja next week, aren't we? Yeah. We'll, we'll do who drinks the most, which country drink the most. And I'll look it up beforehand and surprise everyone with that. You look it up beforehand and we'll surprise anyone.
So how are we doing, Ben? Any any, any questions there? Any questions coming through? Must be um, I never thought of pairing wine with feta. Interesting. Uh, is worse to South Af- African turn. There's a lot, a lot of banter going on in the comments. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely light fizz. How come? with well, the wines is a bit of a light fizz. Uh, you can get um, a little bit of petulance on some of it. I think the New Zealand one can have it sometimes. And it's just a little bit of unresolved CO2. Um, it can give the wine a little lift. So sometimes it's done deliberately to keep the wine a little bit refreshing. Sometimes it's, 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 it sort of disappears quickly after you've opened the bottle. But it's no bad thing. As long as it's not too aggressive, it's okay. Uh, of the three Marlborough regions, which one does Snappier Rock come from? Snapper Rock, sorry. Uh, I think it's a blend uh, of all three, if I'm honest. Ah. <laughs> uh, normally they'd be blended. Uh, I'm just looking at the... The broken bottle. The broken bottle. I do have, I do have an intact label, so I'm just yeah, Don't the... ask about the other one, then. Not suitable for vegans or vegetarians, this wine, because it's been fined with egg and fish products. So sorry if you're a vegan or vegetarian, this this wine you shouldn't drink. <laughs> they didn't say, uh, so it normally means it's a blend. Then what, what you'll find is the the um, the mark, the sort of the, the producers, which in this case is Snapper Rock, will either own or just source the uh, the grapes from uh, various various vineyards in Marlborough, and then sell it as a Marlborough wine. So you probably know you probably find your place a tad extra just to buy from single vineyards or smaller places. That tends to be the trend. Uh, what we found, What food for next week? Uh, so next week is the Ryoka. Uh, so Jeff can answer that because he is that you're going to put. He's now the food man. Is he? Uh, so two reds. We've got a young or Hoven Ryoka next week, and we've got a Criantha Ryoka next week. So one is a young vibrant red wine. Um, and the other is a uh, crown which has spent about 12 months in oak, so it'll have some oaky, oaky flavours. So think of, um, think of, uh, you could have a pork pie, if you like pork Ooh, pie. Yeah. So we could have a pork pie with that, uh, you could have um, some lamb, uh, if you've got any lamb going, it's lying you about. could have some lamb, <laughs> that would uh, that would work quite well. Uh, oh, Jeff said lamb, yeah, and Rupert. So that would work quite well. Um, Jeff, think of some non-meat options for me. What would be a good non-meat option for those who are vegetarian? Um, so we could do do that. Um, Dave's asked what happened to the bottle, and um, I just don't think he knows how to open. That's how you open. Um, uh, the so bottle, isn't it? You're meant to smash the, the bottom, aren't you? It's it's a bit easier. So look, the cap is still on. That's not taken off. So yeah. what, what you do is that if you you weren't here at the beginning, Dave. Yeah. So what you do is you just smash the bottle, you capture the wine in a jug underneath, it's just easy. And you just have to filter out the glass. Sometimes sometimes you get a bit of crunch in there, but it actually just adds to the That's what happens, though. Dave. You get, uh, as my daughter said to me, uh, what did my daughter say? It was, it was the classic one, uh, you should have seen the other guy. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, yeah, I had, a, I had an accident, day with the wines. Oh, I broke both bottles. If you think that bottle was badly off, just, just look at that bottle. Uh, that one's even worse, isn't it? Yeah, so there you go. There's a, glass, there's a glass all in the cellar, but I, I, no, I don't know. Hey, Mum's cleaned it up. Actually, oh, yeah. wow, okay, very good. Thanks, Mum. Uh, so, yeah, we're rocking next week, uh, so uh, we're going to try those two. Uh, again, we're going to try the two different styles. I'll say all about uh, Spanish wines and about the Rocca region and all that good stuff. We're going to talk about the grape variety called Tempranillo, uh, which is a wonderful grape variety from Spain next week. Uh, then on the 28th, uh, we're going to do uh, two English wines. Um, so I've got the two English wines here. Uh, we've got a wine uh, from Stan Lake Park, a Bacchus. So we're going to uh, taste that one. And we've got... It's not very often you find something in a clear glass bottle. Uh, no, well, that's interesting because, um, again, in the wine world, you, what you'll find is that marketeers and producers, or well, marketeers and wine makers have a big argument because the problem with wine in clear glass is that unless it's drunk fairly quickly, a UV light destroys the wine. So yeah, right. really, you should put wine in green or brown glass to protect it from UV light. But if they try and show off the colour, a lot of rosé wines are in clear glass. But the problem with that is that yeah, if, if, if they have any, if they spend too much time on a shelf or you keep it at home in your kitchen, uh, then UV light will destroy that wine and relatively quickly. So um, that's why most wines are in green and right. brown glass. Uh, so that was a Stan Lake Hope uh, Bacchus. 
This one is uh, Winbury uh, Vineyard, the signature one. Uh, that's a red wine, so we're going to try a red and white next week. Um, and I should say, um, I put my sort of call this out to you. Um, I was doing a, a WC wine tasting for a company called Kraft, and Kraft are a uh, English, uh, a British uh, food restaurant in uh, Birmingham, the ICC, and uh, they do some very upmarket food, uh, and they specialise in British food and British or sorry, English wines. And they said, oh, I, said that. I told them about my Facebook sessions, I told them I was doing an English wine tasting. And they said, oh, could, could we, could, if, if we provided the wines for you, would, uh, would you just mention craft? And um, I am gonna, I'm looking forward to going there after this thing goes out. Their they're, they're, they're wine list is amazing. And say, so, British wines or, or an association with Britain in, in, in that sense, either the winemakers are British. So, uh, so, we're, so I will mention craft a couple of times on the English wine night. Uh, so, Great restaurant, uh, uh, and they are provided to you. You can buy these wines from Elizabeth Rose Wines. I have put the information on the website. Uh, I will Facebook it tomorrow. If you go to the website, you can uh, you can buy those two wines. And uh, English Rose Wines have given us a ten percent code. So if, when you buy the wines, if you want to buy them, uh, if you keep Birmingham into the uh, into the uh, there's a coup you can enter a coupon code if you enter a coupon code and put Birmingham there all other case it doesn't matter I think I, try, I did try it, it, it she gave me it in capitals I put in capitals but I, I tried it tonight in lowercase and it worked as okay. well so I think it's probably fine so just, just keep Birmingham in not Birmingham wine school just just keep Birmingham and it will take 10% off the price I did check it it does work uh, so if you want to try those uh, I'll try and all those if you want to do that as soon as you can uh, they, they normally do next day delivery but in the current world we live in, <laughs> it, it might take the new normal as well. The new, the new normal. Rupert so, says roasted peppers, by the way, for ah, good idea, yeah, yeah. Or nice mature cheddar. That's a good call. Not, not, yeah. not, not, not nice mature cheddar. Only nice mature. Cheddar. Only nice mature cheddar. Yeah. Um. So that's the twenty eighth of uh, that's twenty eighth of uh, of May. Uh, we're going to do two uh, two of those English wines. Uh, and I'm told uh, they they were uh, chosen by um. Sam and Emma of Kraft, uh, they're the owners of Kraft, so they, they chose those wines, so they're excellent. So I, I, I do trust them, and uh, we'll have uh, an opportunity, as long as I don't drop them, uh, to uh, taste those in a couple of weeks. Uh, June the 4th, uh, we're going to skip that week. Uh, ben and I are going to, he doesn't know this, I'm giving him the night off. Uh, so we're having a week off before we start season three. I was just about to say, Keely's asked. Season three. So on the eleventh of June, uh, we're going to try a couple of bottles from Bordeaux, and uh, uh, so I mean, so eleventh of June, Bordeaux. We've got a couple of ones from Bordeaux. I, I, I'm going to choose one from the left bank, one from the right bank. If you know what that means, then I will tell you all about that on that night. So we're going to try two ones from Bordeaux, two reds by the way. So we've got two reds from Bordeaux on the eleventh of June. Eighteenth of June, we're going to try two fizz, two fizz wines. We're going to try a Comot and a Carva. Uh, so a carb from Spain, come on from France, again to contrast those two different styles and see what they taste like. And then on the 25th of June, we're going to try a Zimmerdam Primitivo, and we're just going to look at those two. They are the same grape, so Primitivo and Zimmerdam are the same grape, but uh, Primitivo from Italy, Zimmerdam from California, so we're going to try those two, so two red wines there. Uh, so we're going to, those are the nights, and uh, I'm just, um, just to get, putting together the wines uh, with uh, William from Frasius. So we'll have that case ready in uh, perhaps a couple of days for you to buy. Um, so that's those are the Facebook sessions. Hope that's okay. Um, so uh, which two Riocas for next week? Uh, Riocas next week. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, so uh, the, I, I can't remember. I, should, I normally have it with me, but I haven't got the names of the wines. Unless you, you know, I don't want to get done, so I might fall down again. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it's on the. I think it's on the website. If not, I'll post it. But what you need, if you if you haven't got the Fraser's case ready, it's too late. You can't get it because it's already gone. Uh, so if you want to taste similar wines, get a, a young wine from Rioja. It's called Hoven, uh, J O V E N, so Hoven, uh, which is a young Rioja. Therefore, on oak, basically, it should be young wine, should be fresh and vibrant. And we're going to try a Crianza, or Crianza, yeah, Crianza, but Crianza if you want to buy it. So, those are the two wines, those are the two wine styles. What you want is an unoak Rioja and an oak Rioja, so you can try those different styles. That makes sense. Makes sense to me. Uh, so, if you, I, I will, if you want to know, um, I will post uh, on the Facebook and I'll put it on my website the actual wines I've got because you may actually you probably still could buy them for ages because you could buy two wines for ages so you actually I will post those on Facebook tomorrow and uh, put it on the website so you can go get them if you if you so choose 
Zoe's asking when the movie's coming out. We've got season eight. Oh, about the movie. We should do a movie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure it was so. No. I'm afraid. Um, what else? What else? What else? I think that's it. Uh, and then I, I am going to just mention. Um, I am going to mention my um, Zoom. Oh, my Zoom uh, sessions. Uh, so we've we've got uh, Penfolds and Friends. A uh, couple of evenings. Um, second of June. These are Tuesdays at seven thirty. Uh, we've got three absolutely stunning Penfolds wines, bin 407, bin 389, bin 28. I mean, some of these wines are selling for over £60 a bottle. Um, bin 389 is 2011 vintage, so a good nine years on it. And it's it's, it's, it's called the Baby Grange. You've probably heard of uh, Grange, which is the, the best Australian wine uh, anyone produces. Um, so we're going to try one of those. And bin 407 is absolutely stunning uh, from the 2015 vintage. Uh, so we've got three brilliant Penfolds wines, and I've got uh, I've got Mr. UK Penfolds coming. He's the guy which imports Penfolds into the UK, so he's going to join me on that. Uh, has he got a name? Call. Uh, he has. I'm going to write it down. Mark Davenport. Yeah. <laughs> he has got a name. Yeah. So Mark Davenport, Mr. UK Penfolds, he's, he's going to uh, co-host that with me on the 2nd of June. And on the 9th of June, uh, we've got three, again, brilliant wines, this time from Clare Valley. Clare Valley is one of the best regions in, um, in Australia. Um, and we're going to try three brilliant ones from Clare Valley. And I've got Emma Simmington joining me that night. Uh, she she leads the uh, Australian education sort of uh, department, if that's the word, in the Europe. So again, she knows everything to do with Australia and Clare Valley. So she's going to help me with that. Uh, as people realise, uh, I, I like someone with me. I got to, I can't do these things by myself. I got to, yeah, so Ver Veronica's me. asking, uh, can you share the website of the discount code again? Yeah, so uh, it's on the website. So if you go oh, to website. if you go to Birmingham Wine School, it's on there. Uh, the the place you can buy them from is called uh, is called Elizabeth Rose Wines, and the discount code is Birmingham. 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 Can you say it in a Birmingham accent, please? Birmingham. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Um, yeah, so, so 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 for the for the uh, yeah for the English wines, uh, buy them off English rose wines. Uh, coupon into the coupon bit discount code Birmingham. You can you can get ten percent off. But if you go to my website, just go to birminghamwinescore.com. I have I did post all that information before I started tonight, so you should find it on there. And a link, of course, for the for the wines and what to search, how to find them. It's it's, it's I did do it before to check it all worked. It does all work fairly easily. So uh, so those uh, try and come to the uh, try and uh, the, 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 if you they are. The, the Penfolds wines and Claremont are expensive, but the wines cost, I think we've got a good discount, we're going to save £27 on them, and these are wines that are quite difficult to find anyway, um, so we've got six of them together, it's £180 for the wines, I know they're expensive, but they are going to be stunning wines, and it's £35 just for the two sessions for me, and uh, and, uh, and just me actually, I think. Yeah. Um, and on the 5th of June, uh, 5th of June, we've got a, and the one advantage of Zoom over this is that we all interact, uh, only 20 people, so we can see each other, we can talk, we can chat. Uh, I can do a little presentation to your map, so it, it is quite nice in um, in that session. Uh, and then on the 5th of June uh, in Zoom, uh, we're going to do a gin social. We're going to do London Dry Gin, and uh, we're going to get various tonics and uh, garnishes. And we're going to explain how to make the most perfect gin and tonic, and that's fifteen pounds. Um, I assume you can go and get your own London Dry gin, or whatever gin you want, and uh, get a little bit of garnish, whatever tonic you want to like. We'll just we'll just have a bit of fun talking about gin and tonic, and uh, I can share a bit of history about where it comes from, and, uh, and talk about how you make the best. I'm getting bullied in the comments. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Okay. I had this upside down. Okay. Uh, I did get another trip and rise review last week, so thank you for that. You've got to make an apology, don't you? Well, well, I, I did. I, I should make an apology because I did. Did I call Auntie you Annie? Me, you did, yeah. yeah. So I called Auntie Annie last week for not writing a trip and rise review, and then she, she, she afterwards she's on the phone to my wife saying I did leave re did the review, and we, but I still couldn't see it. Uh, she used an anonymous. Uh, <laughs> so, so, I, I didn't know it's from Auntie Annie. So Annie, thank you. It was very kind of you. I do apologise, uh, but I didn't know it's from you. You you left no clue whatsoever, but. But still appreciate it. Still appreciate it. Glenn, Glenn's saying I have to go back to a small glass now. I made this mistake. It's just the biggest. It's the, it's the thing in the comments. No one's listening to you. No, no so I'm no, stealing the, no stealing the show does. with this. No one ever does listen to me. Oh, that's quite sad. 
Uh, any more questions? Any more questions? No, I don't think so. Uh, guys, well, okay, what time is it? Let's let's wrap it up there. Um, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, um, Jeff, uh, Uruka, Dominic, uh, Helen and Katie, if you're there as well, thank you for answering questions for me and helping me out. Um, ben, thanks again uh, for helping me as always. Um, should mention we're part of a local wine school. Uh, so we have lots of my colleagues doing different Facebook and Zoom sessions around the UK. So give those uh, a look in as well. Um, that'll be good. Uh, we will see you next week at 8.30 for um, Rioja. Uh, so it's a good night for me. And a good night from him. Well, yeah, I'm going to finish it one time. Guys, so uh, this, uh, Ben's going to turn me off, so to speak. And, uh, he will uh, <laughs> Don't mind if I do. just say goodbye as he, as he does that. So thanks, guys, again. Be good. Be safe. And uh, I will see you all next week. All